Let's create the screenshots for our app inside iTunes Connect. So if you're not logged into iTunes Connect, go ahead, log in, and go to the app listing we created earlier. And in the app listing, you'll notice there are six sections in the preview and screenshots, 4.7, 5.5, etc., etc. And these correspond to all the iOS devices that your app will be able to run on. And you need at least one screenshot in each of these. Now, Apple are very strict about your screenshots. They must be of a certain size. And I've just pulled up the iTunes Connect Developer Guide. For example, on the iPhone 4, you need these, any one of these sized images, and it must be 72 DPI RGB flattened with no transparency. That means you shouldn't save it as a ping, really. You should save it as a JPEG. You need it for the iPhone 5, the 6, the 6 Plus, the iPad, and the iPad Pro. And that's a lot of images to be doing with at the moment. So if we come over to Photoshop, I've created templates for all of them at all of those various sizes. Now, if you create an image and in iTunes Connect, you try to upload it and it's the wrong size. So I'll just show you what happens if I upload a random image here. It says my dimensions are wrong. So you have to get these right. Apple also say you cannot have a picture of a phone or a device inside the screenshots. But I've never heard of an app being kicked out of the App Store for this. So it's up to you. It's on your head if you do it. And I doubt Apple would kick your app out. And in my opinion, it looks better when you have the device on it and you have a lovely label across it or something like that that tells your user what your app does. So I'm just going to go ahead and create something and come back to you in a second. And here we go. I have created six images, one with an iPhone 4, one with a 5, a 6, a 6 Plus, the iPad Air, and the iPad Pro. And if I was you, I would do something similar to this, and then I would save all of those for future app submissions. Now, we need a screenshot of what our app can actually do. So let's come over to our Xcode, and let's fire up the simulator. And then the simulator is very handy because it takes a screenshot at the, the resolution of the actual screen. So we can hit, where is it? Let's see now, hardware device, nope, debug, edit. There we go, save screenshot under file. And so now that has been saved. So if I just open that, I can then import that into here. And if I transform it inside Photoshop, actually, this is an iPhone 6, so I have to put it in here. And it's almost pixel perfect already. Just requires a little bit of tweaking. So let's just move it up and let's transform it. And there we have it. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to save that. Now, I'm just going to upload one or two into my iTunes Connect. So it's up to you how many you want to upload. But we are going to add a little bit of a snazzy feature so it jumps out at the user when they're browsing the App Store. And there we have it. Just a nice banner that sticks across our image that tells the user exactly what's going on. And then all we need to do is save that as a JPEG. And I will call it exactly that and then put a one on it so we know it's our first screenshot. 750 by 1334. And then let's come over to our iTunes Connect and inside 4.7 inch, I'm just going to drag this up from my desktop. You can't see it right now because it's on the other screen. And if I drop it in there, it should upload without any issues. If there are issues, Apple will be quick to tell you. Now this screen comes up when your user has clicked your app icon when they want to download it. So this screen 
will either encourage them to download your app or prevent them from downloading your app. So you really, really have to tell them right here exactly what your app is about. Okay, I'm just going to create all of my other screenshots. I'm going to upload them and then show you what that looks like in a second. And here we are. I've got two screenshots for each version of a device and you can see what they look like there. Okay, I think I'll add a web view controller for the actual item view to let my user know that they can also browse the stories. But I won't do that in this tutorial because you get the gist of it now. Right, so once we've done that, I, but before I carry on, I just want you to see that there is now a consistent theme going on between our app icon, the screenshots, and all of the colors that I'm using. And users these days will expect that. The final thing that we have to add image-wise here is the app icon. And this is slightly different to the actual icon we put within our app. This is just a fixed file so that iTunes can list your app listing with an image. And this, if I just put a random picture in, it'll tell me my app icon must be 1024 by 1024. So I'm just going to create that. Now I'll just upload it as I've just made it. 1024 app icon. And there we go. There is our app icon. So everything has a nice consistent theme now. So I'm just going to save that. And that concludes all of the image parts of our iTunes Connect listing. But the one thing I want you to remember is that the iTunes Connect images are the things that entice your user to install your app. So I'd advise you to spend a little bit of time here thinking about who your potential users are and how they would view your app and what would make them actually install it over another app.